Okay, a more complicated work energy example. I still didn't do one with angles and stuff in it, but that's okay. Let's proceed on anyway. This is real. Okay, so there's this guy called Professor Splash. And what he does, other than being crazy, is jump from a very high distance into a tiny pool that's like one foot deep with one foot of water. So this is like, uh, let's say, let's just make it 0.3 meters of depth, call it D. And this will be a height. I think he jumps from like 30 feet, so that's about, let's say, 10 meters. I'm just making up stuff. I do have the exact numbers uh, somewhere. Okay, so the question is, what's going to happen to this guy when he hits the water? Well, he's going to stop. What, if, let's see if we can find the force the water exerts on him while he's stopping, and from that we can find his acceleration while he's stopping. Because really, one of the, the measures of how dangerous some, something is or how much, how likely you are to be injured is the acceleration. Um, you know, everyone has different masses, so force isn't really a, a good measure there. Um, so, but we'll, we'll calculate the force. Uh, we'll get an expression for that, and then find the acceleration. Okay, so what else we need to know? That's his mass. I think, I think other than that, we'll, so that's the depth of the water is D, and the height is H. Right away, you should say, I have two things that I know. I know the momentum principle, and I know the work energy principle. And I need to say, okay, momentum principle or work energy? Which, which gun do you draw, right? In this case, I mean... Either will work, really. But which one's going to be a little bit easier? The key here is we're giving distances. If you know something, how it changes over distance, then work energy is going to be better because it deals with distance. So in this case, <clears throat> let me first uh, do a couple things. Let me pick my axis. Here's x and y. So y equals 0 is down here. And then let me pick my system. It's going to be um, the Professor Splash. I'll put that as Dr. Splash. I don't know if he actually has a PhD in Splashology or not, but or maybe it's just an uh, informal term. Plus the Earth. Why plus the Earth? Why do I include that? You don't have to. But in this case, I want to. Because... If I have my system as both of these things, then the gravitational force between those two objects, Professor Splash and the Earth, wouldn't be in the work term. But we have to take into account that somehow. If we have a system like that, then we can have two things. Our uh, energy at any given time would be the kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy. Where close to the surface of the Earth, this is going to be MGY. Okay. And I derived that in, in the book, so you can check that out. Okay, so it's still kind of complicated um, because then what's going to do work on the guy? Work is going to be done while he's slowing down during this part right here. So let me blow that part up. Here's the pool with water. And then here's, he lands in this position. So during that time, there is a gravitational force on him, but really I'm not thinking about that so much. I'm not worried about the gravitational force because it's part of my system. I am worried about this force of the water, I'll call it FW. And this is uh, acting over distance uh, D. Okay, so let's set up our work energy expression. Okay, so work equals change in kinetic plus change in potential. And he's going from here to there. So this is position one, position two. So what, what does work? Well, the water does work, and that's it. So we're going to have F water, the magnitude, uh, D water, the displacement in the water, times cosine theta, 
and that's the work. So here, although he falls all the way down a height h, this force is only doing work over this distance d. And the force is that way, it's pushing up on him to slow him down, and he's moving that way. So what's theta? Theta would be 180 degrees. So in this case, the work would be negative fw d. I'll just leave it as d. I want to emphasize it's the distance the force is exerted while he's moving in the water, not the whole thing. Okay, what about the change in kinetic energy? What's his kinetic energy up here? We, if he jumps from rest, it's zero. What about down here? If he stops, it's zero. Okay, so the change in kinetic energy is zero. What about the change in potential? It's going to be final potential, which is going to be zero, because he's at y equals zero, minus initial mgh. So that's it. Can I, do I have enough to solve for f? I do. Okay. So I can, I got those zeros in there, so I get fw equals mgh over d. Yeah. And, and so the positive thing on it means that, yes, this is doing negative work, which you can do that, it means it decreases the energy of the system. Because right before he hits right here, he's moving pretty fast. He has kinetic energy, and then he stops. He also decreases in potential. Okay, but uh, from this I can find out that that is the direction that he's going to be pushing. It does have the right units. Mg has units of force, distance over distance cancel, so that is a force. Okay, and also what about the higher, the higher I start, the greater that force. The, the shorter that I stop, the greater that force. Okay, so this is the force uh, exerted on uh, the jumper. Now I don't want to, I don't want to calculate that because I don't really know his mass. It would be rude to ask someone's mass, right? Rude. So let's just calculate the acceleration during that time. So I could say F net in the y direction equals MAY. Okay, so now I do have to include that gravitational force if I want to calculate the, uh, the net force. So here I have, um, I want to calculate the acceleration. Okay, so the F net is going to be this going up in the y direction, MGH over d minus mg, and that's going to be m a y. Um, a y should be positive, right? Um, he is accelerating that way, even though he's moving down. So the masses cancel. I get g h over d minus g equals a y. So this little term isn't going to do very much compared to these, but let's just put in some values and see what we get. A y is going to be uh, g 9.8, I'll leave off the units, h I said was 10, d was 0.3 minus 9.8. Okay, so it's 98 over 0.3, I don't want to make a mistake, let me just do it on the calculator real quick, so I'd, otherwise I'd feel foolish, so I get I get 316 meters per second squared. And one of the common um, terms is to get that in terms of uh, g's. So it's 32 g's, where 1 g equals 9.8 meters per second squared. Now there's, that's not really the best thing for G's. The G's actually wouldn't have that G in there. This G. Ah! <laughs> because if I'm standing here, what's my acceleration? Zero. But I'm, I'm considered one G. So it's a little confusing. Um, but that's pretty high, but apparently it's on the, it's on the survivable point. Okay. So I think the, the important thing to see here is that, I mean, you can make this a pretty complicated problem. You can break it into two parts 
the this part where he's free falling and this part where he's slowing down but you don't have to do that you can just put it all together in one big thing and it's not that bad okay